and what you see here is a Yaesu FT8800R. It's a 2 meter and 70 centimeter mobile radio and uh, we're gonna perform an extended transmit modification on this radio. Uh, such a modification is commonly referred to as MARS or CAP mod in the United States simply because mem members of the military auxiliary radio service or the civil air patrol use such uh, modifications uh, to operate on frequencies assigned to those, uh, to those uh, organizations. Uh, this modification is extremely simple. It consists out of the removal of a single resistor. So in theory, that's a really easy job. The only challenge is that this resistor is extremely small. And while I have the tools to do this, I'm gonna try to show you a method that you can do at home. And I know there are some videos on YouTube here where people just uh, either cut the resistor off with a very sharp knife or split the resistor in half with uh, pliers. And I think this is a really bad thing to do because you can or most likely will break off the the leads on the PCB inside the radio. All right, first thing I'm gonna show you is that this radio at the moment is not able to transmit outside the amateur radio bands. 144 megahertz is just inside the two meter amateur radio band. At least in theory, in real life, you would not be allowed to transmit on this frequency in FM because part of your signal would be outside of the amateur radio bands. But uh, for our purposes, it's inside the amateur radio band. So if I push the transmit key here, you see the radio keys up, no problem, and transmits. If I just go a little bit lower in frequency, the radio will give us an error. It knows that this is outside the amateur radio bands and won't let us transmit here. Now the same thing on the 70 centimeter side. 430 is just within the American amateur radio band for uh, 70 centimeters, and you can see that we're transmitting just fine. Going down just a little bit in frequency, and the radio will, will refuse to cooperate. Okay, that was the before thing. Now I'm gonna disconnect the power. I will remove the lid and then we will get started on the modification. All right, that's it, the radio's open. Now let me change the camera angle so that you can actually see what's going on inside. Okay, that's the radio with an opened hood. You could remove the speaker wires here, no problem, just pop out that connector, but I always leave it on. The wires are long enough, so no problem at all. And if you're wondering why I have the radio at a weird angle like this, uh, it'll make sense the moment we zoom in, cause our resistor is hiding here to the left. Uh, I know the zoom will be a problem on this, but uh, Ah, this looks all right. That little resistor that you see down here, see how big the screwdriver is compared to that little resistor. It gives you an idea of the size. Just compare this big screw over here compared to that itty bitty resistor and I'll give you my thumb next to it. Now this gives you a really good idea of, of the size problem here and why it is a little bit challenging to get this resistor removed. Okay, let me change the camera to manual focus just to make sure that it doesn't screw up while I'm showing you how to remove this resistor. And uh, I'm gonna show you one technique that I sometimes use on my own radios. Um, when I'm professionally modifying radios, I don't like to play around. I don't like to accidentally damage things for anybody. So I'm using either um, a special hot air soldering tool or I'm using a tweezer type tool that has, ba it's basically like two soldering iron tips in one device and you just uh, put it together like tweezers and it removes a part like this absolutely no problem. But I know that most of you won't have this at home. So uh, I will show you one technique that you can use at home. Okay, this is as good as I can get it with that size problem. Um, so uh, let's get started on, uh, on one method that you can use. And uh, the uh, two methods that you can use at home, there's, there's actually two, but unfortunately I can't show you both since we just have one resistor to remove. Uh, one option is to actually apply a little bit of solder. In this case, I would apply it on the uh, left side of the resistor cause the ground plane there has the bigger heat capacity and uh, you would just count on the fact that the resistor is so small that the temperature th across the resistor would rise rapidly and both connectors or both joints would melt very quickly and you can just suck it away with a normal desoldering pump. 
Uh, the other way of doing it is simply using two soldering irons. And I know most of you don't have uh, two good soldering irons at home, but that's okay. You can just go to a, uh, a car store or uh, in the United States, uh, any convenience store and buy yourself a cheap $5 garbage soldering iron just for the sole purpose of uh, desoldering a part like this. It's absolutely no problem. And uh, that's the method we're going to have a look at right now. All right, there we go, the part is removed. And the only reason why this was so jittery and didn't look very smooth is uh, plain and simple because I had to do this through the uh, viewfinder of the camera. And if you have never tried this, please try this at home. It completely screws up your motoric skills, but it uh, seems like this part has been removed very cleanly there. The part is still laying in there. So let me see if I find some tweezers and we're gonna get the part out of there just to make sure that it doesn't uh, cause any damage. Obviously you always wanna make sure that there is no solder left behind and no parts left behind, anything else that doesn't belong on the PCB. And here's the resistor. Now of course, since I don't have it on autofocus, the camera doesn't focus on that. So let's go down far enough. But here's our resistor that we just removed. Put it down somewhere if you want to keep it and uh, I don't need it, but put it down somewhere and that's it. And again, inspect these uh, connectors, make sure that uh, there's nothing left behind, that there's no nasty bridging going on anywhere. Um, actually looks like uh, everything looks good down here. So uh, that's it. That's the modification on the circuit board. Now I'm going to put the lid back on and uh, we're going to power the radio up and see what happens. All right, the lid is back on, so let me connect the power and uh, then let's fire the radio up and see what happens. And the radio comes up automatically and you see all the segments on the display are lighting up right now. Uh, this radio is actually one of the few radios that does not need a uh, manual reset procedure to be initiated. It automatically understands that something has been changed and it will automatically do the reset procedure on power up. So now let's see what happens. We are on uh, 430 megahertz and uh, if I transmit, yes, it works. Let's go down. Oh, look, all of a sudden we can transmit down here. And uh, let's go back to the frequency that we used beforehand. Everything's good there. Everything's working just fine. So back over here to two meter, we can still transmit in the amateur radio band and we can still transmit or we can now transmit out of band. Very good.